Hi, you're just in time for Dreamcatcher. I'm your host, Robin Hardin. It's my prayer that today you will find peace through understanding your dreams and your visions. On today's program, Kelly's dreams relate to her past and to her son's future. But first, this next dream catcher has not just one or two, but eight dreams, all about the same subject with the same message. See if you can figure out what the Lord is saying to Shonda. Hey Robin, I have some dream selfies here for you and they are all going to be about my daughter's daddy. I don't know, it seemed like he had a friend or somebody there helping him out or something. That's how, I just remember us standing, standing in court and we were in court for child support. And <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's all I can remember from that one, Robin. It looked like I was signing a mortgage for a house, but I didn't need him, I did, did not need his name on there. He was driving circles around my mom's house. And um, it may have been a car in the backyard, but he was, he just kept driving circles around um, my mom's um, house. Me and Reggie were together, but Kiki's daddy wanted me. And I looked down the road and I saw him coming. And so I, I get Reggie's attention and I was like, get him. <laughs> I don't know if it was Kiara's dad's house, but it was a hallway. And he had all this money and these people, these people were like in the hallway and he was giving his money to these people. And I saw like uh, um, the little, I guess the little checkout where the teller is, where you go up to the teller inside the bank. That was sitting there. And I remember standing on a table. I remember standing on a table and I was like, you know what? I'm and, and see and it seemed like this lady was standing. Um, she was standing right there. She wasn't on the table, but she was standing on the floor. And but I was standing on the table. I was like, I gotta get off this table. So I just finally got off the table. I just remembered I have another courtroom uh dream. Um of course we was in court for child support, and there's this there's this white guy, he's standing on the table, and Kiara's dad, they're standing on the table, but their heads are touching the ceiling. Their heads are touching the ceiling, they're standing on the table. And there's this, I don't know if it's the judge or whoever he was, this white guy, he was sitting on the couch, and he's got these glasses on, and he's looking, he's, he's looking at how far, um... Kiara's dad is behind in child support and he was looking at it and I don't know it seemed like that he was gonna pay all that he was behind and after that decision was um before the dream was over with I said oh I can pay my rent I think I was just watching everything but there's this police officer um and I see Kiara's dad he didn't want people to know that he had money, but the money fell from up under his shirt. My daughter had a dream. I'm not sure if it was before her dad's dad passed away, which is her grandfather, or if it was after he passed away. I can't remember, but she tells me that they were all sitting at the table and he was at the head. Her dad was at the head of the table and he was telling them, I guess how much money they were gonna get. I'm not sure if this money was because of his dad's death or what, but he was telling her that he was going to buy her a, uh, well, I guess I'm gonna buy you a car. That's what that's what he uh, was telling uh, my daughter. And she was sitting at the table too with, with the other children, the other grandchildren. Um, so here, here recently, Kiara's dad agreed to buy Kiara a car so when he finds out that I don't want him and I'm telling him that I don't want him and then he see me with another guy and he automatically assumes that uh, I guess she's with him so he calls me so when are you going to buy when do you want to go buy a car he wants me to go out of town with him to go buy Kiara a car I shouldn't have to go out of town with him to buy Kiara's a car so, 
after a while he texts me telling me let's make a deal well robin i didn't even respond to that because <laughs> that was just I, i'm not even gonna respond to nothing that stupid thank you robin i'll be so glad to hear from you <laughs> about these dreams <laughs> thank you Shonda, thank you for this dream. Although I don't think it needs any interpretation, you know what this dream means. This man wants to be part of your life when clearly it's over. The very first part of the dream, you're in a court with him trying to get child support. He is this girl's father. He needs to support her because he loves her, not because a judge tells him to. Then he says he wants to buy her a car but the car has strings attached and the strings are attached to you, not to her. That's clearly manipulation. This is probably what's going on in real life as well. In one of the dreams, you don't need his name because you're trying to buy a house and you realize you don't need his name. The house is you. His name is authority. You don't need his authority in your life anymore. You are no longer under him. That soul tie that once was when you had this child together is over and you realize that he needs to realize that. You say at the end, tell me I don't have to go in the car with him somewhere. Certainly not. He, you may have to have him in your life to the degree that he's the father of your daughter. But that's where that ends. And you need to let him know that you don't need this stress in your life. I'm here with my guest, Kelly, and she is really having some fabulous dreams from the Lord. God speaks to us in different ways. Sometimes it's to warn us of something. Sometimes it's instruction. But yours are very prophetic. You you have the dream. There's an instruction in there, or a warning, or whatever he's the message is. Mm -hmm. And then a year or two later, you're living it. And and the dreams that are even from that many years ago, it feels like to me my memory. It's like I just had them last night. I, and so those are the ones that. I know there's something mm -hmm. more to them. I remember a dream that I had last night, but I remember bits and pieces, yes. and I know, oh, this person was in it or that person. Mm -hmm. and, but it's like when I wake up, I, I think, hmm, uh, that really, that, that was the pizza that I was, ate. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if dream. I still mm -hmm. remember it mm -hmm. around lunchtime, mm -hmm. then right. I start to consider mm -hmm. there's something more mm -hmm. to this. Um, and there's just that little stirring in your spirit that goes, Oh, there's something there. There's something yeah. about that. And that's the Holy Spirit going, remember this? Yeah. <laughs> Pray, ask about this. You know, that's mm -hmm. when you get that. That's when you don't throw them away. You yeah. go, okay, there's something going on. Yeah. Well, well, I have a dream that I had about two years ago. Okay. Um, and in this dream, my son, who is an adult now, um, he was moving down here to Nashville. And there was a big snowstorm coming. Uh, we're from Pennsylvania. We don't mind snow. We can yeah. drive and it doesn't bother us. Right. But I knew this town will close down. Yes, it will. <laughs> so I remember he was just getting here and I said, do you need anything? Do you need, and it, I was asking him for necessities. And, no, I'm fine. I'm fine, he said. And I was like, are you sure anything? Because there's a storm coming. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, you don't get it. You know, this 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 is it's time not, to go. Yeah, yeah. And so, <laughs> no, he didn't want anything. And I remember feeling, well, I'm just going to go to the store and get it anyways. Um, at this time, this is going on. A dear friend of mine who lives in Florida, somehow she was here in the dream as well, and she's talking with my husband, and she's laughing. And for what she had going on in her life at the time, to hear her laugh was like. <gasps> I remembered calling her oh. like a week later and going, I had a dream and you were laughing. Mm. You know, I mm -hmm. had to tell her. Um, but then I started, I get a lot of headaches. I started in the dream getting one of my headaches. And she came over and she said, Kelly, I'm going to pray over you. And I remember, I think I was kneeling down. She reached out, she put her hand on my head and she was praying. I don't remember the words, I, was, I know she was praying mm -hmm. for healing. and. Nothing wouldn't stop, and my son. He said, 
And he sort of said it sort of like, oh, well, I guess I'm going to have to be the one to do this. And he reached out, and he reached with one finger, and he touched me right here on the forehead. And I woke up. Mm -hmm. I, so I don't know, you know, did mm -hmm. the, the headache stop or what, but it was like he was saying, mm -hmm. I know I'm the one that has to do this. Yeah. Um, so that one's been on my mind of, you know. That touches you. It touches your heart. Because you're his mother and you've been preparing and you've been helping him plan. Do you need toothpaste? Do you need soap? Do you know, you know, we're so used to doing that, that even though he's an adult, you know, there's storms, you might not be ready, mm -hmm. and yet he, what he really needed you to know is that you've already done that. You've already done that for him. You've already prepared him, you have taught him, you've done everything you can do, and now the Lord is saying he may not be there right now in real life, but he's the promise that the Lord has given you is He's going to turn around and give that back to you. And when he touched you, you were healed. He knew he had that gift. He knew it was his to do. He knew that your friend prayed and that was good, but he knew that he was supposed to do it. Yeah. And in your time of need, he came through. So as a parent, we know, we know the scripture says you raise them up the way they could go. Mm -hmm and they're not going to depart. Actually, it says you train them. Yeah. My, my former pastor's wife says, you raise a garden, mm -hmm. you train a child. <laughs> so we're not raising plants here, but you've trained them. You've done mm -hmm. that, and you've prepared for him. Even when he says he doesn't need it, you've, you, know, you went out and you bought it for him anyway. But the Lord is showing you when you need it, yeah. he is going to be there. That was probably the second dream in my life that he was an adult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, all my other dreams, he's, he's still preschool. Mm -hmm. Just this little blonde-headed toddler. But see, he's not anymore. And that was the second dream. Mm -hmm. And that, that shook me up. I was like, whoa, he is an adult. Mm -hmm. There was only one mm -hmm. other dream I had where he wow. was an adult. Now, he's in my dreams, he's an, an adult, adult. now, yeah. And occasionally, he's that little boy. Again. Well, because as a parent, God wants, he will always be your little boy. Yeah. But God is showing you that He is a man, and you've done, you've prepared, you've done your duty as the, as the parent, mm -hmm. and it's going to come back to you. That's beautiful. And the fact, see, we talked earlier about you being an encourager. God lets this friend of yours that's going through some terrible stuff in her life, sharpen your dream and laugh, and that's something so simple. Yeah. But it touched you enough to call her and say, and you were laughing. That's a promise for her. Yeah. That she's going to laugh again someday. Whatever she's going through, she can, one day she will laugh yeah. again. I can, I can, right now, I can hear that mm -hmm. laugh from mm -hmm. the dream. Mm -hmm. Just like she's in the other room mm -hmm. doing it, just it, as yeah. in the dream. She was talking to my husband in the other room, mm. and she was laughing. Right. And pray, when you have dreams like that, it's instruction to pray. Pray. Call that forth. Mm -hmm. Call forth your son reaching out in his gift. Maybe he has a gift of healing. Maybe that's just touching his mother and letting her know that everything she has done in the past is coming back. But he has a dream. He has a gift. And call it forth. And for your friend who needs to laugh. You pray that God touches her so she has that peace, so she has that she can rejoice. Yes. Because when He shows you that, we know it can happen, but it's important to pray and put it to action. Call and it life forth. Life overwhelms us. Yeah, yeah, it does. And I know with that friend, she's overwhelmed. That's where she is. And I want so much to hear her mm -hmm. just that full mm -hmm. on joyful laugh. Yeah, so intercede for her. Call it forth, because she, it sounds like she's in a place in her life where she can't even do that for herself. Mm -hmm. So God trusts you. You're her friend, and you can call that back into her life. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm so glad you shared that. <laughs> that was so my good. one I really wanted to share. I'm so glad you did. <laughs> That's so good. Um, a lot of my dreams up to a couple years ago were very terrifying yeah through my whole life very terrifying dreams so I was always 
waking up with, you know, people were trying to kill me, mm -hmm. you know, they were coming after me. I was being, as a little girl, I was always mm -hmm. being chased, mm -hmm. you know, by monsters or See, whatever. See, that's the enemy. God will give you a warning dream if mm -hmm. there's something that's there's a warning, but when you, when it's constant fear and you know and trembling and the word says I yeah. didn't give you a spirit of fear. Falling was one of my biggest mm -hmm. dreams as a child. Mm -hmm. Insecurity, yeah. it's insecure. That's I, I always remember in the me. dream. It's like if you ride a roller coaster and you feel your stomach, stomach drop. doing that. Mm -hmm. That's what I would literally feel mm -hmm. that in the dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I'd wake up. Yeah, that, that the devil's putting in in messages of of not stable, insecurity, mm -hmm. who's going to catch me if I fall, um, you know, it, not good enough, self-consciousness, these are all intimidation, all lies that the enemy does. Mm -hmm. And he gets it in there. It doesn't matter if we're asleep or awake. If we're asleep and we're not able to fight it, right. it's still there when you wake up. Yes. And we had to fight against that. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and yeah. I have found when I talk to people who dream a lot and we know they're from the Lord, they tend to have the attack of the enemy a lot the same way too because yeah. he's trying to counterfeit and counterattack what the Lord is doing. This dream happened when I was probably I want to guess 11 years old and it happened at least I would say three to six times throughout the time frame of the first one to my mid-20s. Wow. Um, the dream starts off I'm in a department store and back in the early 80s computers were not mm -hmm. a big thing in department stores like no, they are they now. They were just coming out. Right. Um, so there was a shelf and it had maybe, I'm going to guess six or eight computers on there. And being a kid, I want to go play with one. And I go over and I hit the keyboard. And as I do that, the screen says, it just types it out and says, do not touch this again or stop touching this. I'm, I'm, I'm not completely sure of the words. The words yeah. um, so I walked away and went into a part of the store, you know, another part of the store, and then I got that urge, I gotta go back and do that again. They're not gonna know. Yeah. Go back <laughs> over, do it again, play with the keyboard, and again, it says, do not touch this again. So I left again, oh, I'm gonna get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay, leave again. And then I got that urge again. I had to go back over and play with it again. <laughs> and then I go over and I start touching the keyboard and all of a sudden this, it was a reptile demon type. Wow. I really don't, I can't really give an explanation mm -hmm. of it, but it was very scary. And it mm -hmm. was like a what I would say now, a demon face. What I would have said as a child was, lizard face right, right and it is mad and I run and as I'm running out of the store then all of a sudden I'm outside I trip and fall and as I'm falling I don't hit the ground but I'm flying at this just crazy amount of speed mm -hmm. and I know I'm going to hit a wall mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. and you know I, I'm probably going to be dead mm -hmm. uh, and that's when I would wake up I've never hit anything Good. head on <laughs> Good. when I was dreaming. Mm -hmm. I always would wake up. But that dream, it happened so many times and for so many years and now, you know, what, 20, 30 years yeah. later and I'm still, I can remember that. Wow. That's one way you know it was the Lord. Do you remember what the interpretation was, what the Lord said? Um, I remember that there was about the airwaves. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll have to forgive me because mm -hmm. I didn't refresh That's myself right. on well, watching Well, because the com computer is working through the airwaves. Yes. And, of course, you're flying through the air. And um, so there's a lot of air going on. And we know the prince of the airways is the enemy, is the yes. devil. Yes. And there's a lot of temptation going on. Even mm -hmm. as a child, you know, clearly you were warned. And yet, you, you know, you kept wanting to go yeah. back and do it again. And the Lord, I think, and we've just met, but I believe you have a strong personality, which is... A good thing to have, mm -hmm. but the enemy will take whatever our good characteristics are and use them against us if he can. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what he was doing in this dream. He was tempting you, and he would say, "Don't do it." But that was more like a challenge to you because of that strong will that mm -hmm. you have. Mm -hmm. And you're like, "I'm gonna do it again," and yeah. you did it again. And he told you not to do it again. In some instances, the enemy would say, "Oh, come try this," you know. Yeah. But with your personality, he was challenging you. And you're like, 
I want to do it again. I <laughs> was then, the rebel in high school, so okay. <laughs> and so, of course, and then, you know, then he manifests, mm -hmm. um, which then scared you, and, and, and you were going to fall, and the Lord was showing you what, how the enemy was going to try to tempt you, and mm -hmm. he was trying to do that through um, the airwaves. And I remember when you first shared this dream with me, I felt that it was um, entertainment somehow, that mm -hmm. it was more than just computers, but television, radio, something in entertainment. Yeah. And that um, the enemy will use the very call on our life to tempt us. You know, you can go into the media in a good, positive way, or you can go in the wrong way. Right. And if you go in the wrong way, then you do, you know, you do crash and burn. Yes. And so I believe the Lord was showing you that he, that you truly have a call into some type of entertainment, or at mm -hmm. least maybe not entertainment, maybe ministry, mm -hmm. through the airwaves, but that the enemy is going to try to stop it. Mm -hmm. He's going to try to challenge you. He's going to try to stop it in ways that he may not do with other people. Like with some people, he woos them. Yeah. With you, he knows the way to get you is, because if he had wooed you, you would have, I think even at that age, you would have recognized that he's wrong. Okay. But so he went the other way and he's been doing Scaring this longer me off. Yeah. yeah he's been doing this longer than we've been doing yeah it. so he I, knows. <laughs> i've always had a love of music of playing an instrument mm -hmm. um, my dream as a child was to be on the radio right and with with you saying that i can say yes i keep trying right. i keep mm -hmm. going back but something will scare me off and mm -hmm. i will shut down i'll mm -hmm. run away from mm -hmm. it so that to me makes a lot of sense. It doesn't Good. take much to scare me off, it seems. Right. If I'm thinking on my past experiences right. in the past four right. years. And if it's something the Lord has called you to, you don't give up. You right. don't stop. Because if the Lord said, go over there and work on this computer or step into this ministry on the air, mm -hmm. and the enemy's trying to scare you off because he doesn't want you doing what the Lord wants yeah. you to do. There's always opportunity in media if we want to go in a sinful path mm -hmm. and then you could have you could have done it but then you would have crashed and burned so you had enough even in your dream you knew enough to go okay i knew the flying was out of control yeah. and i didn't like it yeah because so. it's not it's not just that you want to be on radio or tv it's that you want to be there for the right reasons. You want to be there because the Lord wants you there. You want to be there because your voice needs to be heard, mm -hmm. because you have a message, because you have a song, not just because I want to be on there, because right. just being famous, we can be famous for doing some pretty terrible things. Right. Right. <laughs> we want to be famous, not infamous. Hey there, I have something very exciting I want to share with you. The new Dreamcatcher Journal. It's geared to help you catch your dreams with over 50 scriptures, inspirational words and revelations, all pointing to dreams and dream interpretation. In the back, there's a quick reference to help you with colors. Maybe you keep waking up at the same time or you have a favorite number that follows you. 44 different time scriptures, I call them, to help you find out what it is the Lord is saying to you straight from the Bible symbols that you can compare your dreams with and find the scripture that might help you interpret your dream in addition there's a hundred and ninety five different symbols from past dream interpretations that will help you to catch your dream order yours today it is a very scary dream I was in a hospital room. I was stuck in the corner. I was down. I was not standing, but I was, you know, like sitting, you know, mm -hmm. cowering almost. Not cowering, but like pressed down yeah. in the corner of a hospital room. My son's in a hospital bed. Above him is hovering a demon. Is that That's what I felt in the dream, mm -hmm. is hovering over top of him. A doctor comes into the hospital room. And I think I was even yelling at the doctor, like, help him, do this, mm -hmm, do that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I couldn't, nobody's listening to me. The doctor can't do a thing. Um, so, you know, that was the, the end of the dream. I was very shaken. So 
try to call my son. I got to hear his voice. That's, right, that's all right. I thought is I need to hear his voice. Finally get a hold of him and he said, no, it doesn't mean nothing. Okay, so, all right, well, I just had to share it, mm -hmm. you know, because it really shook me up. Mm -hmm. And a few days later, he sends me a, an email and said, the dream you had the other night, it really did mean something. I was in a bad way. And it was sort of crazy the timing mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. you know, of your dream. And he just said, you know, hey, I, I wanted to let you know because if you ever have a dream about somebody else, I don't want you to not tell them. Yes, good. good. And, you know, then, then he went on to just say, you know, you really do have a connection with something greater than this world. Yes. You know, and then, you know, he's still searching. And, you know, it, it was a seeing. beautiful, mm -hmm. it was such a beautiful email that I printed it out and framed it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, you know, we never discussed what he was going through mm -hmm. at the time. It doesn't because, matter. Yeah. It, the, to me, what mattered most was God gave me the dream. Mm -hmm. I shared the dream. Mm -hmm. And God's using that to mm -hmm. say, you know, mm -hmm. you right in his own words you have a connection with yeah. something greater yes. than this world we're from the bridge fellowship in lebanon we were we were blessed with the honor to come serve joseph storehouse today for our go do day project thanks to colin for leading up everything he was our fearless leader today joseph storehouse provides nourishment of body and soul to families in need we had uh, three life groups here uh, we had the alexanders the deforge each month, churches, businesses, and people just like you adopt a month. We've been in here long enough, we don't smell it anymore, so that's a good thing, right? Oh, and see, the ladies were great. Look, you could tell they work. They're the only ones that really work. And these ladies on the end, you know, us, we just kind of got paint on our hands. You, too, can be God's hands. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Appreciate the opportunity to serve and God bless you for all that you do. Your love offering to Joseph Storehouse will feed many families. Well, when, so, when you're dreaming, God the Father, the Holy Spirit, is speaking to your spirit. Mm -hmm. And so we are kind of experiencing it. Yeah. And then we wake up and we try to figure it out with our soul, our emotions, yeah. our brain. But our spirit, if we are spirit living in this body, our spirit did kind of experience it mm -hmm. in another realm. And then we wake up and our brain's going, what did, what, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> and we're trying to get it all caught up. And I literally, I pray that God will align my spirit and my body and my soul together because we are a trying being we should be in alignment right. so if he's speaking to my spirit my brain needs to my soul my brain needs to know what it's saying and then this body better be well enough that it can walk out whatever he's telling right. me to do catch dream catcher next time when key finds out that going home is a miracle too and Juan's grandmother visits him in a dream with a very important question. Janice, she sees her daughter through the eyes of the father, and Aaron's dream about a car wreck is pretty disturbing. God is talking to not just them, but to you. So catch us next time on Dreamcatcher, and remember, always catch your dreams. Mm -hmm.